Um, do you guys need your voice level at all? I know my voice doesn't care. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming today. Uh, I did want to start off by telling you, um, because I know that this will come up in questions about the uh, Jobs Ohio lawsuit. Uh, I'm meeting with the plaintiffs later today. Um, and uh, the other plaintiffs later today, and I would expect we might have an announcement. We've tentatively got an announcement set for what time, Sam? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. tomorrow in the Senate Minority Conference Room. But but again, I'm dealing with lawyers, so until you see the advisory, um, I won't be able to tell you for sure. And that would be tomorrow. Um, so the reason I called you here today. Um, while I was on my vacation, which I think I've managed to talk to almost every one of you on, um, Joe Barden called me and asked me a question about Third Frontier money. So I called up my office and asked them to start doing some research, this was a couple weeks ago, about uh, contributions from Chambers of Commerce and others. Uh, the fact of the matter is, today, the Third Frontier Commission appointed by the governor meets and they will be distributing or starting to distribute $24 million to local chambers and regional chambers of commerce. The governor initially when he did his Jobs Ohio push said that it was going to be a privately funded effort. In effect what's happening right now is that public dollars, both uh, the Third Frontier money and through other means are now flowing to directly to some of these chambers to the tune of $24 million and then being washed through and winding up in Jobs Ohio, which as many of you know is going to be a C4 organization. At the same time, the governor has decided that Jobs Ohio's records are not going to be transparent, that the ethics and oversight of Jobs Ohio will be left to the Department of Development, which is his own appointee. So therefore, you have a situation now where public money is funneling through local chambers of commerce, getting washed through with little oversight from Jobs Ohio uh, that could wind up with public funds being expended uh, for partisan purposes or or issue-oriented purposes. So I decided we'd take a look to see uh, how much money has been given uh, uh, from some of these Chamber of Commerces and the people that were on them to Republican office holders. And you will all have disks listing most of those that include contributors um, to uh, Senate Bill, pro Senate Bill 5 lawmakers and also to uh, many of the uh, Republican committees that receive contributions from some of these board members. That amounts to, and the reason we used a 2007 number is because of the staggered terms in the Senate, so you had to go back uh, because of the staggered terms of state senators. That amounts to over $432,865 that has gone to either the Republican Party or Republican committees. How much is that, Brian? $432,865.33. The largest being from the Greater Cleveland Partnership, which is also made up of the local chamber of town. Coincidentally, over the last seven weeks, four of the six local large chamber of commerces have now endorsed the pro side of Senate Bill 5. Yes, um, issue two is what they've endorsed. Um, I don't care what governor is in power. I don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat. The fact of the matter is, this is now a laundering scheme that allows for public money to flow into organizations that will be compromised in their decision making over issues like Senate Bill 5 in the future. Uh, and that 
regardless of who is governor, we now have public funds directly or indirectly intermingling with the politics of whoever's in power. And those power holders will be able to make decisions that will affect all Ohioans and leverage those folks. And I am extremely concerned over the lack of transparency in Jobs Ohio when you mix this together. I would ask today, um, very strongly ask, that Chambers of Commerce across the state of Ohio that accept money from Jobs Ohio will step forward and indicate that they will not and that their board members will not participate on any issue or electoral activity involving it, uh, Senate Bill 5 or Issue 2. It is unseemly the connection that can be seen here between how this is um, unfolding. Uh, it leaves an impression to the public that there is no public oversight and that public dollars could be washed through and be used to further the governor's partisan agenda on the ballot. And again, I want to emphasize uh, that I don't care who's governor. Uh, it's a dangerous precedent. And I will say this, if there were a Democratic governor to follow this governor, it would be just as dangerous. You would see chambers of commerce all of a sudden under pressure left and right to abandon some of their issue principles because of the exchange of public funds. So with a lack of oversight here and a lack of public knowledge of what's going to happen with Jobs Ohio, there's no other thing to do but ask these local chambers, first of all, whether they've been approached about issue two, and secondly, whether they will commit that they will not participate in that issue campaign because of the public money that they're receiving today. 